In this video I'll show you how I built this worm composting system from three five gallon buckets. This is for use in vermiculture where we're going to use worms to compost some of our kitchen and garden waste. So you're going to need some tools and materials. First of all a drill and a quarter inch drill piece, also a one eighth inch drill piece and I'm also going to be using various hole saws. You're going to need a box knife or a utility knife or just a blade from one so that you can clean up your holes that you cut. For this tap we, we actually just used a recycled bottle top. You can go out and buy a proper tap if you want from a hardware store but this way it's cheaper or free even. Uh, so all you need to do is cut it off like this one, preserving some of the shoulder there. I actually did it with a, a Japanese hand saw. You're going to need a tape measure and some kind of marker to make some simple measurements. We have some silicon here to seal in everything and um, also glue some fly screen in place. You're going to need eight sets of nuts and bolts. The size isn't too important, these are about an inch and a half, but as you can see they're used to support the tower in place. Uh, when gluing silicon to plastic is a good idea to rough up the surface with some glass paper first. This will help it adhere pr better. Um, and as I said, the fly screen and some means of cutting it. Of course you're going to need your free buckets as well. Um, these are recycled ones, bought used locally. It's important that they're food grade and they didn't have any chemicals in them or any very toxic paints before you use them. And for this project, we just need one lid. Okay, so this is going to be the bottom bucket. Let's call it bucket number one. Uh, this bucket will have the tap in it, in our case, a bottle top. And that's so that any moisture that uh, drips out of the farm will be collected in here and you can actually easily drain that out. So first of all, we need to put a tap hole close to the bottom here. We need to avoid drilling into the actual base itself. So just make sure you've got an idea of where the base begins and drill above it. So I've already fitted my drill here with a suitable size hole saw. What I need to do is make sure I've got hold of this. What I actually do is once I've made the guide hole, I actually put the drill into reverse because this is only plastic and it makes a much cleaner and much more gentle cut. Like so. Okay, so now I have my hole. It's slightly too small for the bottle top to go through, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use my box cutter knife or utility knife, or whatever you wanna call it, and just make the hole slightly larger, like so. Okay, so I've used the knife to make the hole slightly larger. There's a little bit of a rough finish, but we're not too bothered about that. So now what we want to do is take a little piece of fly screen like this and just put it over and then put some glue in here. Push the top through and then we need to put some silicone as well around the inside. And here's the finish tap. So any time that I need to drain any liquid out of that, I simply take this off. Good bit of recycling, and I save myself a few dollars on, on buying a tap. And there it is on the inside. Now we, what we need to do is put some uh, quarter inch holes for aeration around the bottom of the bucket. So I'm going to get my drill ready. When considering exactly where to put the aeration holes, the second bucket is going to sit probably around three inches from this rim to the top of here, which means the bottom of the bucket where the worms are going to be sits around here. So what we want is a series of holes just below that rim so that the air enters and it can come up underneath the worms. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I've got good measurements and then I'll start drilling the holes. Okay, so I calculated that the bucket that will house the worms will sit 
uh, around seven inches from the top inside this container. So I've measured down seven inches and put a dot all the way around. So I'm ready to start drilling. I just need to make sure that all my holes are half an inch to an inch uh, below where I've marked. Okay, so there's a good number of holes. So when the worm bucket sits around here, the air can enter and actually come up underneath where the worms have been living. So we're ready to prepare bucket number two, which I have here. This is where the worms will be housed. So I've actually put on my um, eighth inch drill bit. And what we want to do is put a load of holes uh, in the bottom of this one. And those holes are so that any excess moisture can actually filter through into the bucket with the tap that we've already prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and put a load of holes here. Okay, so there's my holes as support to make sure that all the plastic burrs are removed. Some drill bits are better than others at cutting through plastic. This one's actually uh, very clean, but in some cases you may have to to use a blade of some sort or a utility knife uh, to actually clean them up like so. In this case, I'm, I'm happy with the, the result it is, as it is. Now I need to change the drill bit to a quarter inch bit. So now I've got my quarter inch drill piece and I want to put some aeration holes in the side of the, the worms housing. So um, what you need to consider is that you're going to have worms uh, bedding and substrate here. So uh, maybe you'll have it up to halfway full so you want your holes to be basically in this area here. So I'm going to just start drilling. The reason why we have an eighth inch holes in the bottom of this bucket is we don't want any worms falling through. So that's why the holes are smaller there. However, some of the babies are very, very tiny. So to further protect them, I've actually pre-cut a circle of uh, fly screen. And what we're gonna do is actually use some silicone glue and glue that into the bottom. I've stuck the fly screen down with some silicon. I haven't made the best job of it, but um, I'll just allow that to dry so that the uh, fly screen no longer moves. And then I can put a, a second coat around the, the rim and it'll look much nicer. Now I've now applied a second coat of the silicone glue. I just used my finger to get it as smooth as possible. It doesn't have to look really pretty. And when this dries, I can actually remove this access by hand is actually rubberized. And now that bucket two is finished, we can move on to our final bucket. This is where the worms will have some additional bedding. And this is where you will eventually deposit very small amounts of food scraps for them to eat. So the idea is that we put a load of uh, quarter inch holes in the bottom of this because the worms need to pass between this layer and the one below. So I've put plenty of holes in there, it will ensure the worms have an option to switch layers. Um, I've not put so many in that it makes the, the bottom of, of the bucket too weak. Now that I have my quarter inch holes in the bottom, I'm going to put some holes in this area here all the way around for aeration. Okay, so I've put three lines of holes around nothing lower than around halfway uh, because this is going to be the top layer where you're going to put your garden scraps and now what we need is to take our lid and if we have a hole saw we're going to put large holes in the top and then a piece of fly screen over the top I decided to go with a one and an eighth um, hole saw you can use inch, inch and a half, whatever you want. I guess the, the larger the holes or the more holes you have, the better ventilation.
there we have it. I urge you to collect all these pieces up, stuff them into plastic bottles that are due to go to be recycled. Don't just throw them in the trash. So now we need to cut another circle of fly screen and glue that on. So here is the lid with the fly screen uh, part partially glued in place. I need to wait for that to dry out and then I'll put another layer around, make sure it's stuck very well and then I'll cut the excess off around here. And here's the finished lid. I actually put another circle of silicone around here. Okay, so here's the three buckets. Starting from the bottom, some squares have been cut to fill in the ventilation holes on the sides of each one. Um, it's, more, it's extra work of course to do this, but uh, beneficial that is going to certainly reduce the amount of bugs that can enter into the system. And now what's left to do is we want to space the buckets out in this order and we need them to be something like this distance apart. Basically I like to measure three inches from the rim of this level to the top of here and then drill four holes like so all the way around and then basically put these screws through from the inside so that when I put the bucket in it sits on top of the next one. I have buckets two and three here we don't need to do this to the to the base. I'm gonna measure down here three inches put a little mark on each quarter because we're using four screws you can use a handle to line up where you need the front and back ones and then these have an obvious mark. So I'm going to do that as well to this bucket and then simply drill the holes using a quarter inch screw. And my nuts and bolts are just going to go something like this. You don't really need a spanner, finger tight is good. I'm going to do that to all four and then I'm going to repeat the same uh, with the top layer bucket. Okay. So, now I've installed the nuts and bolts, four in each, on levels uh, two and three. We don't need them in the bottom one. So now the system is stackable. And for less than 10 bucks, if you use recycled buckets like I did, uh, you can make yourself a worm tower like so. If you don't want to or cannot make your own, um, I'll be happy to knock one up for you at a cost. And uh, of course I can also provide the worms to start off your worm farm. Thanks for watching.